Welcome back to Fox News at 9. Now, with less than six weeks away uh, from Election Day, Republican candidate Greg Abbott and his Democratic adversary, Wendy Davis, are waging a multi-million dollar battle to become Texas' 48th governor. Both gubernatorial candidates spoke exclusively with Fox News tonight about their values, aspirations, their campaigns, and priorities if, they, if either of them were to become uh, the next governor of Texas. Let's take a look. In November, voters will choose between Republican candidate Greg Abbott and his Democratic rival Wendy Davis for governor of Texas. Both candidates continue pushing for votes as Election Day keeps getting closer and closer. Davis is not letting her political star fade away, especially among the young, female, and Hispanic crowds. That's why she visits with university students across Texas. Fox 2 News met with the state senator at the University of Texas San Antonio to learn more about her expectations and what she stands for as an elected public official. I stand for real people. I am a fighter. I am a person who came from a life of struggle. And I have, in my entire public service career, been driven to fight for people. Davis, 51, was raised by a single mother and became a single mother herself at age 19. She was also the first in her family to obtain a college degree, and later in 2008, she was elected to the state Senate. If elected this November, she would become the third female governor in the history of Texas. But many think she's not capable of completing the duties of governor because she is a woman. I would say that that's absurd. Um, I am a woman who has has worked hard and demonstrated through incredible hard work that I can be a very effective and successful elected public servant and I will continue to do that as governor. Wendy Davis has filibustered not once but twice. I'd say that if you vote for this bill you're simply happy to ignore medical science First, in 2011, when she stonewalled the budget that slashed over $5 billion from Texas public schools. If I can have order, we... Two years later, in 2013, she catapulted to national Democratic stardom after her nearly 13-hour filibuster against Texas abortion law. What I learned from those experiences is that people want to know that someone is willing to stand and fight for the things that matter so much to their day-to-day -day lives. Davis recently revealed details about her two abortions. If elected governor, she says she'll continue fighting for women's rights. I believe that women should be supported, respected, and trusted to make their own decisions. Decisions along with their family and their faith and their, their doctors and that government ought not to intrude upon this most personal, difficult, heart-wrenching of decisions. Greg Abbott is much on the pro-life side of the political spectrum. In fact, he opposes abortion even in case of incest or rape. Fox 2 News traveled to Austin, Texas and met with the Attorney General at his campaign headquarters to learn about his values and priorities if elected oh, I'm governor. Not, I'm first is faith in God. Uh, second is a commitment to family. Uh, third is uh, ensuring uh, that we provide opportunity for everyone. Abbott is a prominent attorney, a renowned judge, and since elected as Texas Attorney General in 2002, he has fought for the right to keep and bear arms. He says he's fighting for Texas families and values. Abbott has been wheelchair-bound since the age of 26, but that has never slowed him down. Our lives are not defined by the ways in which we're challenged. Instead, we get to define our lives by how we overcome the challenges we face. Republican Greg Abbott leads Democrat Wendy Davis by 12 percentage points in the race for governor, according to a recent University of Texas and Texas Tribune poll. Abbott has the support of 44 percent of the voters surveyed. Davis has 32 percent. It's expected to be a heated battle between Texas State Senator Wendy Davis and Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott. Both say are ready to go head to head for the governor's seat and start making important decisions in our state. Decisions that affect 26.4 million people living in Texas, of which 38% are Hispanic. 4.9 million Hispanics will be eligible to vote on November 4th. Experts predict one of every four voters will be Hispanic. Every vote is important. This is the first time in 14 years that we will absolutely elect a new governor. And for the Hispanic community, I would say 
There's so much at stake here. Well, the Hispanic vote is a key focus of my campaign. Uh, I'm running plenty of ads on both English as well as uh, Spanish television and radio stations. And so we are, are doing everything we can to better uh, connect with the Hispanic community. And Perhaps a question on everyone's mind tonight. If elected, what will be each candidate's top priority as governor of Texas? My first focus is on job creation. Uh, my second focus is going to be on education. Uh, we want to make sure uh, that the pathway to education will elevate everyone up the economic ladder in this state. As governor, immediately I will call an emergency item for the special, uh, for the legislature to consider uh, so that they will put ahead of everything else consideration of funding our schools adequately and equitably. A humanitarian crisis is unfolding on the southern border of Texas. A situation both candidates witnessed firsthand. Davis called on Governor Perry to deal with a border surge, as Abbott called on the President of the United States to strictly enforce immigration laws. Governor Perry did not heed my call for a special session. We have to see the human side of what's going on there. And at the same time, we have to work actively to seek the federal government support to keep our border secure. This humanitarian crisis will continue until Barack Obama steps up and becomes a leader of this nation and solve the immigration crisis. Both candidates say if they are the people's choice for governor, they will work with Texas lawmakers and law enforcement agencies to combat drug trafficking and human smuggling on the southern border. First, by listening to our local law enforcement and border patrol agents and DPS agents that are working on the border today. I have a new law proposal that goes after the drug smugglers uh, and the human smugglers. And we want to ensure uh, that these criminals uh, will not be preying upon anybody in the state of Texas, ensuring that our communities and our cities are safer than they've ever been. Clearly, it's a heated gubernatorial race. Davis and Abbott duking it out in campaign ads running on both English and Spanish television, radio, and even movie theaters. At this point, Abbott is reintroducing himself to Texans and reminding the mostly Republican statewide electorate about his conservative principles. But in Texas, where Democrats haven't won a statewide race since 1994, Davis has to do more than just strike her opponent over the airwaves. My opponent is constantly focusing on attacking me while I'm focused on building a stronger future for the state of Texas. Any uh, attempts by the Greg Abbott campaign to, to attack those ads in that way is simply a desperate attempt on their part. Meanwhile, as the Texas Attorney General and the Texas Senator have their eyes set on the Chief Executive Office of the state, current Governor Rick Perry is leaving his door open for a run for presidency in 2016. We're not only lawful and legal. Now, both candidates tell Fox News they plan to visit the Rio Grande Valley in the upcoming days as they continue to push for more votes. Now, meanwhile,